All right, class. So in this chapter, it's actually really fun. We're going to talk about chemical reactions. A lot of things on a daily basis that you do, like chemical reactions, you just don't think about it. You drove to school. We don't go to school right now. You drove somewhere today. You did a chemical reactions. You cook. You did a chemical reaction. You wash your hand. Hopefully, you did a lot of that. You did a chemical reaction. So all those things are chemical reactions. You just don't think about it. Now, some chemical reactions are simple. Some chemical reactions are more complex. But it doesn't matter how complex or simple a chemical reaction is. You can always write a chemical equation. So when you write a chemical equation, you're going to write the reactant on the left side. You're going to put an arrow and you're going to write the product on the, on the right side. Okay. And um, so I'm going to give you an example of a chemical reaction here. N2 gas plus H2 gas goes to ammonia gas. So one thing you probably notice that every time uh, you have a chemical reaction like this one, what you have to do, you have to mention the phases for each compound. We have to mention the state. Is it solid, is it liquid, or is it gas? In this case, it was gas, so I put a little G. So if it's solid, you put S, liquid, L, gas, G. And if it's dissolved in water, and we're gonna go over this one later, you put AQ for aqueous. So AQ would be aqueous, and then we're gonna go over that a little bit later, what that is. But you have to mention the phases, you have to put the states of each compound on it. Now, the other thing to always remember, that every time I give you a chemical reaction, every time I give you a chemical equation, the first thing that you need to do is balance it. You need to balance the chemical equation. Don't forget, don't forget balance. Uh, so hard to write in this book. You have to balance it. Don't assume that it's balanced. You have to balance it. Now, what do I mean by balancing chemical equation, chemical reaction? What that means is you have to have exactly the same number of atoms on each side, okay? So you have to have exactly the same number of atoms on each side. So let's give it a shot over here. Over here, how many nitrogen do I have? I have two nitrogens, but right here, I only have one nitrogen. That cannot be happening. So then what do you do to balance the chemical reaction? You use coefficients, right? So I'm going to put a two over here. So now I have two nitrogen. It matches up with two nitrogen over there. Now, how many hydrogen do you have? You have, you have three hydrogen. Do you agree? You have, sorry, two hydrogen. I can't do math. You have two hydrogen over here. How many hydrogen do you have here? Be careful. You have six hydrogen over here. You see it? Because I put a coefficient too, so I have six hydrogen over here now. So what do I do? I added three over here, three times two is also six. So now, two nitrogen, two nitrogen, six hydrogen, and six hydrogen. So I balance this equation. Again, every time I give you a chemical equation, the first thing you need to do, you need to balance it. Don't assume it's balanced. What that means is you have to make sure you have the same number of atoms on both sides. And when we balance it, we balance it by adding the coefficient. Never change the compound. You cannot change the compound. That's the balanced compound equation. You cannot mess with the formulas, right? This is NH3. That's a balanced neutral compound. You can't mess with those. The only thing you can do, you can put a coefficient behind it. We're good so far? Okay. Now, let's, let's do another easy one. Let's do another easy one, and I'll give you a hard one to balance. When you drive your car, N2 plus O2 goes to NO2. That's going on in your car engine. And then those are all gases. Now, quickly, balance this for me. Again, you have to have the same number of atoms on both sides. And so I have two nitrogen here one here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a coefficient. So you don't change the compound. You cannot change the compound, right? This is NO2. This is my compound that I'm for. These are the reactants I'm using. You can never change the compound. The only thing you can do is to add a coefficient, okay? So you balance the equation by adding 
coefficients. Okay, so I added two here, so now I have two nitrogen, two nitrogen, but how many oxygen do I have here now? Remember, now you have two NO2, so I have four oxygen all together. So what do I have to do? I have to add a two over here. I have to add a two over here. So far, so good? Okay, now I do want you to, to remember this, that chemical reactions are all around us. Chemical reactions are all around us. Now, just for fun, we're gonna balance one more chemical reaction and then we're gonna go over and categorize chemical reactions. So hopefully you've had this before and you're good at balancing chemical reactions, but let's do one more, because I wanna give you one. Oh my God, this is not coming out. Oh, hurt. Um, sodium phosphate plus Magnesium chloride goes to magnesium phosphate. Mm. Plus NaCl. It's a long one. I'm not gonna put the, the state of phases on there, but that's okay. I want you to get a, get a little practice on balancing chemical reaction. So I just give you a chemical reaction, a pretty long one. Now the question is, this chemical reaction, how would you how would you balance it? How would you balance this chemical reaction? And what we talked about, what did we say? We have to have the same number of atoms on both sides. Okay. Now before you balance it, I want to give you a hint. When you have reactions like this that have polyatomic ions, here's a hint. This is going to make your life much easier. Balance the polyatomic ion as one unit. Balance the polyatomic ion as one unit. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that, don't try to say, oh, I have one phosphorus, four oxygen, I have two phosphorus, eight oxygen. No, 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 no. PO4 is a polyatomic ion, right? So balance it as, as one unit. So I have one phosphate here. What I have here, I have two phosphate over here. So take a minute, balance this chemical reaction. This is much harder than the first two examples. And remember, here's my hint. Look at polyatomic ions as one unit when you balance in it. So you have one phosphate, you have two phosphate. That's how you should look at it. Don't say I have one phosphate for oxygen. No, you have one phosphate, you have two phosphate. All right, did you balance it? Now, if you balance this, let's see. Let's see if we can do it together. This is a hard one, but we can do this. So like I said here, you have two phosphate and you have one phosphate here. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add a two over here. So now I have two phosphate and I have two phosphate here, right? Because PO4 two, I have two of these. So far so good. Now, because I added coefficient here, now that I have two phosphate, how many sodium do I have? Two times three is six. Now I have six sodium. If I look at over here, I only have one sodium. So I'm gonna add a six over here. Okay, now that I added this, how many Cl do I have? I have six sodium, that's great because I have six sodium over there, but how many Cl I have? Now I also have six Cl, right? Because when I added six over here, now what I have, I have six NaCl, six Na and six Cl. So here I only have two, what am I gonna do? I want to add a three over here, then three times two is six, six and six, this matches up. I know, we're almost there. Now, how many mg? Three mg? I have three mg over here. All right, this is balance. This wasn't easy, this was a hard one, but I wanted to do a hard one. So my coefficient is two, three, one, no coefficient, and six over here. So that was balancing chemical reaction. So practice, practice balancing reaction. And you are going to actually get a lot of practice 
because we are going to do a lot of chemical reactions for the next couple lectures. But the key is balancing chemical reactions as balancing polyatomic ions as one unit. All right, so now what I'm going to do today, I'm going to categorize chemical reactions for you. I'm going to categorize chemical reactions for you. Okay, ready for first category? So I'm going to categorize chemical reactions for you. The first category is combination. Combination. Now, combination is when you have A plus B goes to AB. You have A plus B, oh, you probably can't see that. You have A plus B goes to AB. That's a combination reaction. You combine it together. So combination reaction is A plus B going to AB. Give me an example. Here's an example. Let's say I have copper solid plus sulfur solid goes to copper sulfide. That's a combination reaction. You're combining things together. Now, what do you think the opposite of combination is? Every time I ask this, someone says uncombination. Uncombination is not a word. The opposite of combination would be decomposition. Is decomposition. Okay, what's decomposition? Decomposition when you have AB going to A plus B. When you have AB going to A plus B, so you decompose. All right, here's my favorite reaction to show. Calcium carbonate over time decomposes to calcium oxide solid and carbon dioxide gas. It decomposes, one thing decomposes. I like talking about this reaction. Calcium carbonate, you've heard of that word before. Um, statues, they used to make statues from calcium carbonate, okay? Now, what happens to the statues over time? What do you think? Over time, statues, they get disfigured, right? And I read somewhere that in China, they spend so much money, billions and millions of dollars, to try to restore the Buddha uh, statue. So all the countries, they spend a lot of money trying to restore the old statues. And the reason the statues get disfigured is because those people did not take care of one egg. Because they use calcium carbonate to, to make the statues. Now, what happens to calcium carbonate over time? It decomposes, especially if you have a lot of rain. Rain is acidic. This is going to be happening all the time. Now, here's a problem. As calcium carbonate decomposes, it forms calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. So this is a gas. What happens to the gas? It goes away. The gas goes away, so you can never make this reaction to go back. So that's why statues get this figure over time. So one day, if you get famous and they want to make a statue of you, you're going to say, no, I don't want calcium carbonate. Gold is the way to go. If you make a statue from gold, that's not going to get disfigured. If you can't afford gold, silver is good too, you know. We'll see. If you get that famous that they make a statue of you, you probably can afford gold or silver. Um, so far, so good. So, just next time you see a statue that is kind of falling apart, you're going to say, hmm, calcium carbonate. That's what they made it from. Okay, number three. Ready? Number three is single replacement reaction. Number three single replacement reaction okay so so far we've done combination decomposition which is the opposite single replacement reaction now single replacement reaction um just like the name basically what's going to happen you're going to have a b plus c so you're going to have a couple and you're going to have a single guy and the single guy breaks up the couple you end up cb plus a yeah 
atoms have so much drama, you have no idea. So that's my single replacement reaction. To give you an example, I have zinc solid plus copper sulfate. Zinc is gonna break this guy up. It would be zinc sulfate plus copper solid. Again, we are gonna go over all this reaction in detail. I just wanted to give you an overview. Okay, number four. So we did single replacement reaction. The next one is double replacement. Double replacement. Now, what do you think the double replacement reaction is? Now, the single replacement reaction, you had a couple and then you have a single guy, you have a compound and you have one metal that's gonna break him up. Now, for double replacement reaction, you have two compounds. What they're gonna do, they're going to switch partners, okay? So what do you have? You have AB plus CB. So now you have two couples and what's gonna happen, they're going to switch partner. Again, no judgment. Well, atoms have a lot of drama. So that's a double replacement reaction. What's gonna happen is they're going to switch partner. Let me give you an example. An example would be silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. So you have two compounds, they're going to switch partner. What you end up getting is silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. So far so good? Okay, so all I'm asking you to do is to see a compound, is see a reaction, be able to recognize what kind of reaction you have. So combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, ready for last one? Okay, our last one is combustion reaction. Our last one is combustion reaction. So our last one, number five, is combustion reaction. Now, combustion reaction, so our last one is combustion reaction. So combination, decomposition, uh, the opposite, single replacement, double replacement, and the last one is combination, sorry, combustion. And the combustion, this is going on in your car as you're driving. So what we're gonna have for combustion, we're gonna have a hydrocarbon, I'll explain what that is in a second, you know some of it, plus oxygen go to carbon dioxide plus water. So you're gonna have a hydrocarbon. What's a hydrocarbon? Hydrocarbon is a compound that is made of nothing but carbon and hydrogen. That's why you call it a hydrocarbon. So it has some number of carbon, some number of hydrogen. So when you have hydrocarbon plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O and plus energy. It gives you energy. Okay, what do you put in your car? Gasoline, right? So what do you think gasoline is? Hydrocarbon. Any type of fuel that you have, minus the electric car, I don't know what those are. Those are, those are different. They're hydrocarbon. So any kind of fuel that you use are hydrocarbon. It's kind of cool. So next time, instead of saying that I'm gonna go get gas, what can you say? I'm gonna go and get some hydrocarbons. Um, don't say that, don't, don't talk like that, people. I'm gonna question you just a little bit, but it's cool. Now, let me give you an example of combustion reaction. C3H8 plus O2 is gonna give me carbon dioxide plus water. Now, this reaction is cool because C3H8, you guys know what that is? Barbecue, how do you make barbecue? How do you make the flame go? Propane, propane is a hydrocarbon. So any type of fuel that you use, those are hydrocarbons. So next time, 4th of July, when you're barbecuing, what are you gonna be thinking about? This is propane, it's a hydrocarbon, and this is a reaction that is going on, kind of cool. Now, what I want you to do quickly, I want you to balance this equation, okay? Now here's a hint for you. When you're balancing 
combustion reaction, balance carbon first, then balance hydrogen. The last thing that you should do is balance in oxygen. Otherwise, you're going to go crazy. So balance carbon, then hydrogen. The last thing you should balance is carbon. Okay, so let's do this. I have three carbons over there. I'm going to add over here. So I have three carbons. That's good. I have eight hydrogen. I'm going to add a four here. So I have eight hydrogen. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to do is balance in oxygen. So three carbon, three carbon I added here. Then I had eight hydrogen. I added a four, four times two, eight hydrogen. Now how many oxygen do I have here? I have two oxygen here. How many oxygen do I have here? Be careful. Three times two is six. Four times one is four. So I have 10 oxygen on this side. So this was two. Now here I have three times two, I had six. And then four here, I had 10 oxygen over here. So two oxygen here, 10 oxygen here. What do I do? I add a five over here. And then I have 10 oxygen here. It matches the oxygen over there. So far, so good. Okay, so then I would have a five. So if hopefully you can see, I don't know the lighting is that great. So I ended up having five O2, three CO2, and four water. So balance carbon, then hydrogen. The last thing to balance is oxygen. All right, now the very, very last thing to talk about. So combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. There is one last thing to talk about, but I'm not going to give it number six. And that is, I'm not going to give it number six because I'll tell you why. And I want you to make a note of it. Redox. Now, redox reaction is a big umbrella. Redox reaction is a big umbrella. Okay? Combination. Decomposition single replacement and combustion, they are on the redox reaction. So redox is a big umbrella. Combination, decomposition, single replacement and combustion, they are under redox. The only reaction that is not under redox is double replacement. So we're going over the category. Combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, combustion. All of them are under a bigger category called redox. I'm going to go over redox later, except double replacement reaction. Double replacement reaction is the only one that is not on the redox. And that's the first one we're going to go over next time. So far, so good? Okay, so think about this until, until next time. Everything you do, a lot of things that you do are chemical reactions. You just don't think about it. All right, I'll see you guys next time.